Hello, I would like to share my opinions and thoughts about pharmaceutical supply chains. My name is Emre Göllü. I'm still working as a supply chain manager for Turkey, Middle East and Africa region at UCB Pharma, which is a Belgian-based company. Now, I have a background in chemical engineering, both Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degree, graduated Istanbul Technical University, where I used to work as research and teaching assistant before I joined private sector in terms of pharmaceutical business. Uh, I started my career in pharma sector by Hoffman La Roche, Turkish subsidiary of the Swiss company with quality management. Then after completion of, uh, of MBA study, again in Istanbul Technical University, I just moved to materials management, which I can say used to be my entry to supply chain management. Then also I just uh, went into production planning uh, and warehousing and distribution parts of supply management. And after having fulfilled five years by Roche, I just uh, changed to Belgian company Janssen as logistics manager of Turkey subsidiary. Uh, and in this occupation, my main responsibilities used to be all the legs of supply chain management, like importation, air demand planning, local toll manufacturing, planning, technical purchasing, warehousing and distribution. And um, since six and a half years, I have been working for UCB Pharma. The first five years I have spent as the logistics manager of uh, for Turkey. And then since one and a half years, I'm still working as the supply chain manager for Turkey, Middle East and Africa region, which is a duty st still consisting of all supply chain related activities in Turkey and coordination of again this uh, establishment of supply chain network for Middle East and Africa region, which still uh, comprises the coordination of new product launches, all management of relations with the partner right over there, ensuring the pre-registration sales supply and making products available for the launches and as well, uh, management of supply chain efficiency and uh, effectiveness and directly uh, make the establishment of a uh, continuous system to ensure the uh, supplies for the whole region. current problem I see with pharmaceutical supply chain is I think simply the real supply chain concept is missing in the pharmaceutical sector. What I mean with this is that most of the pharmaceutical companies do not recognize the supply chain as starting from the vendors and ending up at the final customers which may, I mean are the, the patients in, in, in this case. Normally, they are considering it as a simple operations like producing and supplying to the market via the wholesalers. And so this should be uh, given continuity. And the other parts uh, can be so easily neglected, but the, this makes the competition for the companies really different. And accordingly, we can say that most of the companies prefer the centralized concept of the supply chain, which is non-flexible uh, directly. Uh, for instance, we can say most of the companies, even the major uh, multinationals one, uh, well, prefer to make production and uh, in particular places and make distribution from the uh, this particular places to the whole world which might be difficult uh, sometimes considering the distances to ma market considering the lead times of production and lead times of uh, procurement and it might happen in one particular market that by a competition with other um, companies right over there 
product availability needs to be increased, which means that more and more supply needs to be done in this market and uh, different policies policies in terms of stock manage stock management and uh, supply uh, might be needed to be to get conducted for particular uh, markets but if there is a centralized approach of supply chain this is almost impossible to be flexible uh, in the market in order to respond to the competition, especially to the movements of, of the competitors in the local particular market. This is one of the major problems, but the non-flexibility is uh, mostly related to the uh, GMP approach uh, as well. The GMP concept doesn't allow the pharmaceutical companies to be really flexible but in order to survive in the critical markets the pharmaceutical companies should give particular attention especially how they can act uh, in accordance to GMP by a decentralized approach and uh, in order to achieve this the flexibility and competitiveness in the market, they need to give first their primary focus to build up the real supply chain concept in their organizational structure, even in terms of management, in terms of process continuity, in terms of process harmonization, even in the whole region, the different region, geographical regions overall the world. And what might be the needs to ensure the procurement in an efficient and effective manner and accordingly the supply to the different markets in an efficient and effective manner. Well, the question of who is affected, I can easily answer that both sides are affected. First, patients are, namely uh, the end customers are affected because being not able to find the medicines they need to use even on time and in full quantity and if their demand is not bad they intend to look after the alternative and uh, in the meantime also the companies are also affected because if they wouldn't be able to supply the markets directly on time and in full quantity they will lose even patients which will lead up to lose the market share and to lose their incomes etc a total negative impact uh, like the domino play we can say um, starting from losing the patients continuing by losing the market share and losing the income and a total loss of uh, business directly, which is easily impacted by a single strategic problem, we can say. Now, in today's competitive environment, in each country, we can say the most important thing is the existing in the market. So, if you lose your patients or if you lose the prescriptions by the physicians, is it, you lose directly your market share because in each therapeutic area there is a strong competition. Also, most and most of the companies are entering the market with their particular products, whether branded or generic, it uh, doesn't matter. And for the patient, the most important thing is to have the alternatives also for the therapy and to, uh, for the cure which is necessary. The patient looks after to have its medicine available. And in order to make the medicine available, and if you intend to sustain in the market particularly, you need to make your supply chain really effective in order to ensure the product supply to the market with certain continuity and without any problem, the, which will make it possible for the patients to reach the products every time. Otherwise, 
you will be impacted def definitely in a negative manner and interruptions in supply might not be easily recoverable let's imagine that if you uh, are supplying a particular product or an API for local production to a country uh, an interruption in supply even with a short or mid-term duration might directly lead uh, in the long term to, uh, the, to the loss of prescriptions and then patients accordingly and to uh, recover this might uh, take a couple of years indeed which will uh, require more investment, more effort, more dedication of workloads and uh, also then you will be starting again from the zero point it might be so easy to lose the market share but it is really, really difficult to uh, directly gain again the lost market share in one particular market. This is why the companies uh, need to pay particular attention to have their supply chain and make products available in the markets. In fact, the solution of the problem might be simpler than everyone would think of. The companies should give particular attention of how to create the supply chain concept in their organizations and uh, directly they should give priority to end-to-end uh, -to, -end uh, to realize end-to-end -end supply chain even starting from their organizational structure and directly reflect it to the markets in which they are still existing and to the ones in which they intend to uh, conduct their, their operations. The end-to-end -end supply chain starts directly from the procurement, I mean the interactions with the vendors, to the final delivery of, the, of goods to the patients directly, and which uh, consists of different particular steps uh, which are the mandatory to uh, get conducted in a harmonized sequence between each, each other and in order to ensure this companies should consider supply chain management not only an operational tasks for themselves on the contrary they should perceive supply chain management as a strategic strength which will bring uh, themselves certain advantages as cost efficiency and uh, achievement of better market shares existing of and expansion to different markets over all the world and uh, ensuring their consistency of uh, business uh, of b businesses from different perspectives if supply chain management is uh, not considered like this it is also unavailable for the companies to have particular problems in terms of business operations as well and in terms of uh, financial figures and objectives as well we can say the most important thing is to uh, be differently keen on the importance of supply chain uh, from the strategic perspective from the and also from the operational perspective and to reflect this importance to the organizational structure and then uh, be flexible in the management of this supply chain network according uh, to the organizational structure even in the global level or the I mean the companies the multinational companies operating in the global level and even also the ones uh, at the lo lo local level this would uh, be uh, one particular attempt to get rid of, of this problem also uh, the ones uh, for the future the ones who will be able to create a real supply chain management concept in their organization in their policies in their strategies and in their operations will be able to survive 
in the markets by responding to rapidly changing market needs so effectively. But the ones who will directly resist into changes and who wouldn't be able to adapt their structures, strategies and operations to the changes even on local basis and who will directly object to the uh, differences between regions and countries as that will have certain difficulties to conduct their operations into um, into directly strategic strengths and will have the definite difficulties to survive in the particular markets where competition will be definitely more increasing than today.